What Ike Allen and Andy Anderson have created at Avaya is what the world needs. Hello, Avaya family. I'm Andy Anderson. My partner, Ike Allen, and I are teachers, mentors, and the co-owners of Avaya University. Avaya is the creator of over a thousand books, films, courses, teachings, and other supportive resources. Thank you, as always, for joining us. Our fellow teacher, Eric Bowers, is back with us today to talk about psychedelics and complex PTSD. Eric believes that working through trauma is one of the most courageous, meaningful, and beautiful things that humans do. With his training in somatic therapies, attachment theory, interpersonal neurobiology, and nonviolent communication, Eric brings a wide range of skills and knowledge to his counseling work. For 12 years now, Eric has worked with various psychedelic medicines therapeutically and in ceremonies for his own healing. He has a level two certificate of completion with the Psychedelic Somatic Institute. Eric is also an author and musician and community organizer with the Abundance Community Farm. Welcome back to Avaya, Eric. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here. Great to have you back. And okay, so I know that you recently completed a an eight-month training in psychedelic somatic in interaction i can't even say that interactional psychotherapy is that how you say it that is yes okay yes. interactional psychotherapy so how did that training inform your understanding of ptsd as well as complex ptsd yeah it's been uh very informative it's really helped me understand it more deeply and thoroughly i used to think of ptsd more in terms of the symptoms and now I think of it more in terms of nervous system states. Um, so when we're having a response to a threat, there are four different nervous system states that we can go through. And if we get right to the fourth, the third and the fourth, then we're really talking about PTSD. So um, all mammals have these nervous system states. So we, we'll start with the example of an impala who is grazing in the, in the grass and feels really relaxed. So there's no threat there. So that impala would be at nervous system state zero, calm. But then uh, a cheetah approaches and the, the impala all of a sudden senses that there's some danger. So that puts it into state one. That is a beginning state of fight flight or sympathetic arousal. And, and, and that's a state that can last quite a long time. It doesn't, it doesn't have a huge cost to your body and, and your, your nervous system. A lot of people who just live very stressful lives are probably living in state one quite a bit. Once the cheetah makes its move to attack, and the impala takes off, now they're both in state two. This is full on um, fight flight, sympathetic arousal. It is a short lived state. You, can, you can't last long in full fight flight because it takes everything you have. You're either running for your life or you're fighting for your life and that takes everything. Imagine just a sprinter doing a hundred meter sprint, but, but you, know, you, just, you can't go much longer than that full out. And once the cheetah catches the impala and has, you know, really got it, then the, the fight flight has failed. And so the cheetah goes, sorry, the impala goes into state three. This is the first stage, first level of dissociation. And you can find these, you can find examples of this on YouTube and so on. The impala just looks like it's already dead, even though the cheetah hasn't started ripping into the flesh yet. But it looks, it collapses, it looks lifeless. There's opioid release happening, endogenous opioid happening for the impala to start to numb some of the pain and so on. But there's still a chance it can escape. If the cheetah gets distracted by hyenas or something like that, the impala can come out of that state three and back into fight flight and, and make its escape. So there's still a possible solution to this. Um, but uh, if, there, if that 
solution doesn't open up, then everything's collapsing, everything's shutting down. And if the cheetah does start to, if there's no distraction for the cheetah and it starts tearing into the flesh and now there's definitely no solution left, there's no escape, then there's state four of dissociation. There's more opioids to help numb pain and you know a more complete numbing and blanking out. And so what Saj would say, Saj Rob, Rosby is my teacher in the, in the psychedelic somatic interactional psychotherapy. So he would say trauma is what happens when we're overwhelmed and trauma lives in state three and four. So um, you know, the, the, it's the overwhelm that sort of defines trauma and defines then PTSD. Yeah. So complex PTSD is just more repeated experiences of overwhelm over time. And the majority of complex PTSD comes from childhood trauma happening over the years of childhood. Um, a lot of people I think would think more of PTSD as being, I, I think maybe less and less, but I think first P PTSD was more related to war and car accident, rape and so on. But as we understand the nervous system and the brain now, you know, people like uh, the neuroscientist Bessel van der Kolk and Gabor Mate are really helping us see that children are getting overwhelmed on a regular basis if they're not getting the right safety and attunement and connection they need. It's, it's so hard to remember, I think, as an adult, what it's like to experience life as a child because we as adults have developed defense mechanisms, biological defense mechanisms to numb us out from feeling things and psychological defense mechanisms to try to keep us safe and so on. Children don't come into the world with that, but they will develop those very quickly if there's you know, not enough safety and connection. Um, but before they're developing that, they're just wide open, you know, and feeling things completely fully. Um, so, you know, that's one of the hard benefits of psychedelics is they help you remember what it's like. They take you back to full feeling states and, oh, yes, okay, yeah, this, this, this was traumatizing for me as a child to get yelled at or to experience, um, you know, shutting down every time I had an emotion or to get sent to my room every time and told I was bad and all of that. Oh yeah, those were overwhelming things. And children are not born with self-regulating neural networks. They don't go to their room when they're deeply upset and they don't say, wow, my body has just got so much energy and I'm just feeling enraged and upset. And I think I should take a breath here and kind of shake this out and really, you know, they're, they're not, they don't have any capacity to self-regulate. So what does that mean? That means they start dissociating. They, they, it's, it's, it's overwhelming to their system. So that system is learning at a pretty young age if necessary, how to already go to states three and states four, mm -hmm. depending on how severe the trauma is, of course. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned just briefly in that the one of the benefits of psychedelics um, is to help bring people back into that that state. Can you share a little bit more about benefits of psychedelics specifically for that complex PTSD? <clears throat> yeah. Um, I want to say first that Saj, I heard him in a different interview. Um, he worked as a as a therapist for 13 years in a in a private practice and and um, almost exclusively worked with people with complex PTSD. And none of them were war veterans, you know, meaning all of them were 
working through childhood trauma. They all had the um, symptoms of PTSD. They all fit the diagnosis of PTSD. And, you know, complex PTSD, I don't think is in the, in the DSM. I don't, I, I know Bessel van der Kolk was really, has really been campaigning to get it in there, but I don't think they've accepted it yet, which doesn't mean a lot to me, except, you know, it's probably not getting the support and acknowledgement and coverage that it should. Um, so psychedelics in, so I'm going to speak more from the training I've just had because the, the I'm going to call it PSIP instead of psych, uh, psychedelic somatic interactional psychotherapy. So PSIP is the most relational and somatic work that I've experienced. And it's based on a, a modality called trauma dynamics. This is what Saj studied in grad school. And this is what he did for 13 years before he got into medicine, uh, psychedelic work. And it's about staying very much with, with what's happening in the body and trying to surrender the secondary consciousness, the mind, and letting the body just work it through the nervous system. So let's come back to the impala for a minute. If the pal impala does get to escape after being caught, it runs off. And once it's clear and safe, have you seen what they do once to, to work the trauma through their system? Shake, maybe? They shake. Yeah. They just, and it's out. That is primary consciousness. That is just a, an innate intrinsic consciousness in the body. That is, there's no mind in the impala saying, okay, now that I'm free and I've got this highly stressful thing in my nervous system, I know what to do. I start to shake and I go faster and faster. And there's no mind of the impala doing that. The impala's nervous system just knows that it's got a highly stressful event in here that is it needs to metabolize essentially. And so this autonomic, automatic process of shaking happens. And then the impala is done. And it goes back to its life eating. It doesn't carry uh, a limiting belief that I'm not fast enough. I'm, you know, I'm stupid to have gotten caught, you know, and all of the other things that a secondary consciousness starts to bring in. So now back to children. If children have this big upset because someone doesn't want to play with them or whatever and their nervous systems is going and they're crying or they're angry if there's an adult that can step in that's really resourced and say hey whatever you're feeling is fine yeah just keep feeling it i'm right here with you it's okay what you're feeling it's really fine with me we're just going to feel this through yeah just breathe that's that's telling the child, you, it's fine. You can allow this, your nervous system knows what to do. Just keep feeling it and it'll work it through, right? But very few of us had that or enough of that. And so instead we get told, don't be such a crybaby. Don't make a big deal of this. Here's some ice cream, whatever secondary thinking and strategy comes in to, you know, put a block on the primary consciousness that, that could just work it through if it had the support and opportunity. So psychedelics, now in this case with PSIP work, we're working a lot with cannabis. When Saj was doing his trauma dynamics work, it, there was just this fluke, um, lucky thing that started happening, which was that some of his clients were using cannabis after later in the day. And they came back to him and they said, you know, sometimes after our session, I go and I smoke some cannabis and it keeps going. Because with the whole idea with trauma dynamics is to try to surrender and let the nervous system work it through, just like the Impala, Impala does. But when Saj started hearing this about cannabis, first he thought, no way, that doesn't make sense. But fortunately, he started experimenting. And it turns out if you combine cannabis with the trauma dynamics process, 
it deepens it. It allows for more of the primary consciousness to be available to uh, metabolize the trauma. But here's where the relational or interactional part is. It's that the therapist needs to be the parent that wasn't there or the adult that wasn't there to say, hey, you can feel whatever's going on here. It's okay, I've got you. The parent, the, the therapist needs to step into that role. And now we're talking about, you know, deep relational or attachment dynamics. And that's why the PSIP work is, is not, is, is more psycholytic. It's more ongoing therapy. It's not your traditional sitter model of psychedelic. It's much more relational. You got to build a lot of trust. You, you, you have to become a trusting, safe person, not just for the client as an adult, but for their inner children, for their nervous system to learn that, okay, this person is someone that I can take to my vo most vulnerable places and they're gonna be there for me and they're gonna help me feel their through. So that's why I say this is the most relational and somatic work I've done because there's some build up time of just developing the trust and safety then you start slowly going in deeper and deeper. And through the relational container and the safety that's been built over that, the client's secondary consciousness starts to surrender, starts to less and less stop the primary consciousness from doing its work. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Wonderful explanation. I, I appreciate that. And um, one thing that you've kind of touched on throughout this a couple of times is this concept of dissociation. Um, what What is it for people who don't quite understand what the dissociation is and what part does it play with PTSD and complex PTSD? Yeah, I, 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 am, I am just appreciating the power of dissociation more and more. I'm, I'm really developing um, a deep kind of almost reverence for dissociation because it was the only solution we had. Thank goodness we had it, right? So again, if the parents, if there's an adult that can step in and say, hey, whatever you're feeling, I'm right here with me. Just keep hearing my voice. Look at me. I'm right here. It's okay. You can feel this, whatever it is then we wouldn't need to dissociate, right? There's that solution is the, is the adult, the parent, whoever it is, is the solution to feel what's really hard to feel. And, and when you have that solution, then you come back from state two to state one to state zero, and then there's a hug and, and it's done. But when you don't have that solution, then dissociation becomes the solution. Just like it was for the Impala. Impala has been captured by the cheetah. It's, there's no escaping, at least at first. So dissociation is the solution. Um, so let's keep it with, with um, humans. So there's nobody there to help us feel these huge things. So dissociation means if you think of a, a graph and state zero is calm and then one goes up a bit and two goes up a bit, right? We're ramping up the threat level and the, the activation level and it doesn't work. Well, dissociation is everything starts shutting down. Heart rate goes down, you know, all the system starts collapsing, shutting down. So state three is the first level and you're, you'll start to feel maybe hopeless. Um, you might feel depressed, uh, lethargic. There might be some sleepiness that's coming in. So with state three, you're still feeling some things. You haven't completely checked out. Um, state four is where you're really cutting off. You're, there's numbness. It's a blank dead, you know, you're not, you're not feeling anymore. Um, so, you know, this is where we can put trauma on a, 
spectrum and the, the worse the trauma is, the deeper you're going to go into dissociation to survive it. What's really unique with PSIP is that, well, let's start first with cannabis. Again, it needs to be paired with the, the trauma dynamics, the somatic interactional process. When it is, cannabis is really good at um, excavating the dissociation in the nervous system. It's really good. And, uh, and the PSIP process is really good for keeping connection while that's happening. If you just go back into dissociation and you're floating around again or whatever, you're not going to metabolize any trauma. You're just dissociating again. The whole, the whole, um, the way that we metabolize the trauma and clear the dissociation from our system is by reassociating to the dissociation. And the, the way that that works very well is if you have a therapist who keeps asking you, what's it like now? tell me more about the hopelessness or tell me more about how cold it is. What's it like to be numb or dead, you know, or floaty. So the therapist is going with you and, and providing that solution and you're not alone. It's okay to feel this, even dissociation. Um, and then the, the nervous system, the consciousness is getting turned back on itself it's reassociating to what it had to dissociate from. Mm -hmm. And that allows it to clear it, metabolize. It's, it's the only modality I've experienced so far that works so deeply with dissociation. In my past experience with other modalities, dissociation is a sign that you're going too far, so you better you know, um, resource back into the body somehow that's not this approach. This approach is go as far as you need to go, but just keep noticing everything you can about it so you can reassociate and keep me with you so that you're not alone with it. And then we're going to, eventually what happens is then if you stay with that, the nervous system just starts to find its way back to your body. And if you watch any of the videos on the PSI website, the Psychedelic Somatic Institute website, you'll see that that's a hard, that's where it gets really hard because you go back into your body the way you came out, right? And the way, why do we go out of our body? Because it's terrifying. Because it, you know, imagine getting chased by a cheetah. It's terrifying. Imagine when you're four and you, this giant who is your parent, who's supposed to be loving and protecting you is furious and enraged and coming after you with a belt or a spoon or that's terrifying right so in order i wish there was another way and maybe we'll discover it but in order to fully metabolize the trauma we come back into the body we reassociate to the state two panic terror but in connection and then the therapist i'm right here it's all right i'm right here with you uh, i'm with you every step of the way it's so relational here's my hand feel me i hear my voice we're going through this together and then it's a short wave because it you know stay two is not long lasting so that's the that's the hopeful piece of it is it's really hard but it's short it's like a 30 second to a minute wave of that panic and terror and then we're back into the body, going back to one and hopefully all the way to zero. Mm -hmm. With complex trauma though, there's a lot more dissociation. So we're gonna have to go back in to dissociation probably several times. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, thank you for so eloquently explaining that whole process and, and what that would be like for someone um, and, and to have it be that relational kind of um, context for them so that they are feeling supported all the way through. Um, You've mentioned uh, cannabis, what, what psychedelics or other psychedelics um, and which ways of working with them work best for PTSD or have you already answered that? <laughs> uh, I think I could answer it more. Um, I think I'll throw in here that I, I have an article on my website called Psycho Psychedelics and Psychotherapy, what medicines and what modalities are right for you. 
And in that, I talk about how there's three different categories of psychedelic healing. And I would say even non-psychedelic healing could be put into three categories. Number three is transpersonal spiritual healing. So things like ayahuasca, high dose psilocybin, LSD, maybe yeah, high dose LSD can open you up to transpersonal connection with, you know, the universe with God, whatever it is. And that can be hugely healing in different ways. Like people who have end of life anxiety often get a lot of healing from a transpersonal psilocybin journey because they feel a connection to something that's greater than this life and so on. And all of a sudden, Oh, it's okay that I'm dying. There's this waiting for me kind of thing. So that's, that's tier three, that's transpersonal. Then there's tier two, which is getting a deep look at the ego that you develop based on your trauma, getting a good look at the identity you developed. It can be quite hard because you all of a sudden see your shadow and all of those things. It's a lot of difficult insight and there can be a lot of hard feelings that come with it and so on. And psilocybin and ayahuasca can help with that too, and um, LSD and so on. Tier one is what we're talking about. When you're working with PTSD um, and any kind of attachment, relational trauma, developmental trauma, then you need to be working directly with the nervous system and most of the time relationally. So Cannabis is the best for dissociation that I've experienced, that Saj has experienced. It's not good at much else. It's not good for tier two very much or tier three, but it's excellent for tier one. Um, and then it's, and, and then the, the rela interactional somatic process is a huge help because it brings in the relational solution and the staying with the body and so on. Um, ketamine is pretty good too. Um, low, low dose ketamine and not the psychedelic doses. There is a therapeutic dose you can use with ketamine. And then again, bringing in the relational, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not as powerful as, as, uh, as cannabis for getting into what's deep in the nervous system, particularly the dissociation. But if you started with cannabis for a while, then ketamine can take over and it's a little gentler. Mm -hmm. MDMA is pretty good for the relational work. You know, they've done, they've done good research. MAPS has done really good work with MDMA for PTSD. However, as far as I know, and, and Saj used to be, you know, used to be involved with MAPS. And according to him, they're, they don't, go as deeply into dissociation. They do a lot of good work with state two stuff and with relational stuff. Um, but when it comes to the dissociation, I don't think they're going as deeply as the PSIP work. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing about the different different kinds of psychedelics, et cetera, that uh, that might be included in in the process. And one other thing I wanted to talk with you about before we start wrapping up is shame. Yeah. A lot of times you hear the terms shame or toxic shame as it relates to people who have had complex PTSD. Can you share a little bit about the link that you see between the two? Yeah. Um... Yeah, so if you if, if we take it back to the childhood experience, you know, uh, one of the, you know, if, if, if we come back to the child that's feeling huge feelings of fear or anger or upset, um, and they're getting told to go to your room, you know, or getting some other kind of punishment, um, the, you know, the, the, their unconscious mind is automatically going to try to make meaning out of this. Um, and they're going to make it about themselves as children, because everything is about yourself as a child. 
So there they are sitting in their room with their anger, their fear, their upset, whatever. And they've been told that they shouldn't be feeling that, you know, they shouldn't be such a crybaby. They shouldn't be so rude or whatever. And, and so shame is often part of the, you know, the result of that. There's something bad about me. There must be something bad about me. That's why I've been sent away. Yeah. That's why I've been spanked. That's why I, I lost my, I lost some love with my parents. And then attachment is, is the priority. Bonding, connection with, with the caregiver is the priority. And it's been the priority for, for as long as we've been humans because human children don't have any capacity to fight or flight. So their whole sense of safety is based on staying, feeling connection with caregivers. And connection means that they like me or hopefully love me and no matter what, you know, and that they come when I'm upset and all of that. So, and I'm pretty sure that's how it was for most of human history until we started changing how we parent. Um, and so attachment is the priority. Authenticity is second to that meaning allowing the fullness of our expression. So if we are getting punished for how we feel or behave and we're getting told not to feel or so on, all we're trying to sort out mostly unconsciously is how can I maintain as much connection as possible? So it's bad to be angry. It's bad to be afraid. Okay, I'm gonna start numbing those things. I'm gonna start dissociating from those things in order to maintain some attachment here. And, uh, and I'm gonna slam the lid hard on that by adding shame, that it, it's a shameful thing to feel weak and vulnerable or powerful or joyful or whatever it is. So just in case the dissociation isn't enough, actually what happens, what I've seen happen is once the dissociation starts getting cleared, you know, shame is more of a state three response. So if, you're, if you've been deep in state four to try to manage not being able to feel anything and that's how you survived your childhood, what happens is once you start to clear state four, then more of the state three shows up and often there's shame there. So you, you work your way out of dead, numb, flat, and now you're starting to feel things again, which is really good, but usually you start to feel the things that are harder that led you to cut off so deeply. So maybe shame starts showing up more or depression or hopelessness or fear. If you have an ongoing relationship with your therapist, then you can hold it in the contest. Like this is actually a really good thing. This is a sign that we're clearing out the state four. And it's going to be hard, but we're going to keep working at it. And once all that state three, you're going to have, you're, you're going to burn through, you know, together. We're going to burn through the shame and the hopelessness. It's going to still be hard. Then there'll be the panic and the terror, but we're going to burn through that together too. And it, it's hard. There's no denying. It's hard. I, I, as part of the training, I have to do these sessions. They're, they're tough, but it's way better than the, then keep then living with numbness and you know less feeling more floaty more cut off it's really hard to have a good relationship with a lot of dissociation in your system i can tell you that you know it's really hard to fully enjoy your life you know yeah so it's a good sign to start feeling more even if it's hard Sometimes you got to slow it down because there's a lot there and that's fine. You know? Yeah. I appreciate you, you touching on that. Um, not only the, just the reality of this process being hard that you are describing, but also, uh, why it's worth it. What, what's the, the light at the end of the tunnel, what, mm -hmm. how it's going to help you have a greater life and, and more joy and more of more feelings of all sorts. So I appreciate you, you sharing about that.
Yeah. 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 There's some really, that's why I'm, I'm so passionate about this work and so committed to it and want to teach it and so on. It's, it's, it gives me more hope than any other work I've done. Like I've seen more, um, more benefit, more results from this work and really changing people's capacities to, you know, I, I'm, I've long time been about attachment theory and relationship and that's a passion of mine just to have uh, people experiencing really healthy, wonderful relationships. And it's, it's becoming more and more possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom and expertise on the topic. And uh, let's talk about how people can uh, work further with you. I know you have a great PDF uh, book on your website that you're giving away for free. And we've got a button below link into that. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, so that's a book I wrote a few years ago. So it it is it's not it doesn't have anything about PTSD in it or dissociation and so on. But what it'll give you is a really good idea of attachment. It, you know, and how it does go into how our trauma is experienced and how the brain and nervous system adapt based on our childhood trauma and so on. So it'll give you a very good idea. It, you know, if you read my book after this interview, you'll, you can say, oh, okay, there's what's happening to the child's brain and nervous system and, and psychology, uh, mind and, you know, psyche, if they didn't get held enough or if they got punished all the time. And, and then from there, you can come back to the nervous system map and go, okay, they're, they're dissociating there and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So the book's very valuable for that. I don't have a thing set up. So when I see someone that um, joins my newsletter after this talk, I'm just going to email them a PDF. If I forget or miss it, just send me another email and say, hey, where's my PDF? And I'll send it to you. Okay, great. And um, I also want to mention the Psychedelic Somatic Institute. Lots of good videos and information on that website for people who want to know more about the PSIP work. Wonderful. Right. Great. Well, thank you for, for giving away your, your free digital book as well as uh, sharing other resources with us. And again, everyone, there's a button below to that, that you can go, go grab and get in touch with Eric um, to get your, your PDF. Um, any last insight, anything else you want to leave people with before we wrap up? Yeah, uh, I do want to add that, you know, again, the trauma dynamics work that the P PSIP work was built on was developed without medicine. So there is a lot you can do without medicine as well. The medicine just helps it go deeper. And it, it, I, I hate to say this because I'm not so much in favor of always making things go faster, but it, it does help speed things along, but it makes it harder at the same time. So um, so there is a there 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 are ways to work without medicine. I tend to work only with medicine because th you know that's that's what that's the kind of work I want to do. That's the work I'm training in, and that's that's where my heart really is. Yeah, wonderful. I also want to mention um, that Saj Rosvi has he's a he's a wonderful speaker. You know he's and he's been doing this work for a long time. So there's really good um, podcasts with him that I highly recommend. Um, if you read the article that I mentioned on my website called Psychedelics and Psychotherapy, Which Medicine and Modality Are Right for Me, the bottom of that, you'll see some links for interviews with Saj. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for reminding everyone of that and, and sharing resources with people who are looking to explore this modality further. And, and just thank you for your, your compassion and wisdom and for doing this with us today. Yeah. And I, I, I forgot, I also want to acknowledge that, you know, the, the tradition of working with psychedelics has been around a long, long time. So I really want to acknowledge all the cultures that it originated from um, and how it's been passed along through many, many generations. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. For yeah. Having me.
Thank you so much, Eric. And thank you also to the Avaya students who are watching or listening for showing up for yourself today on your own healing journey. And we will see you all again very soon. Take care. Avaya has changed my life. Avaya has made me the woman I am today. Avaya is my home. Avaya is personal freedom. Avaya is the reason my life continuously improves. Let everyone in your life know about Avaya. Everyone needs to know about this amazing company. Thank you, Avaya, for appearing in my inbox. What Ike Allen and Andy Anderson have created at Avaya is what the world needs.